Good morning. I'm Lee Jamison, and this is the 331st installment of the Bible in a year. Today's readings include Ezekiel 30 through 32 and 1 Peter chapter 4. A Lament for Egypt, chapter 30. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus says the Lord God, Wail, alas for the day, for the day is near, the day of the Lord is near. It will be a day of clouds, a time of doom for the nations. A sword shall come upon Egypt, and anguish shall be in Cush. When the slain fall in Egypt, and her wealth is carried away, and her foundations are torn down. Cush and Put and Lud and all Arabia and Libya, and the people of the land that is in league shall fall with them by the sword. Thus says the Lord, those who support Egypt shall fall, and her proud might shall come down from Migdal to Syene. They shall fall within her by the sword, declares the Lord God, and they shall be desolated in the midst of desolated countries and their cities shall be in the midst of cities that are laid waste. Then they will know that I am the Lord, when I have set fire to Egypt and all her helpers are broken. On that day, messengers shall go out from me in ships to terrify the unsuspecting people of Cush, and anguish shall come upon them on the day of Egypt's doom, for behold, it comes. Thus says the Lord God, I will put an end to the wealth of Egypt. By the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, he and his people with him, the most ruthless of nations, shall be brought in to destroy the land, and they shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. And I will dry up the Nile and will sell the land into the hand of evildoers. I will bring desolation upon the land and everything in it by the hand of foreigners. I am the Lord. I have spoken. Thus says the Lord God, I will destroy the idols and put an end to the images in Memphis. There shall no longer be a prince from the land of Egypt, so I will put fear in the land of Egypt. I will make Pathros a desolation and I will set fire to Zoan, and will execute judgment on Thebes. And I will pour out my wrath on Pelusium, the stronghold of Egypt, and cut off the multitude of Thebes. And I will set fire to Egypt. Pelusium shall be in great agony. Thebes shall be breached, and Memphis shall face enemies by day. The young men of On, of Pi-Beseth shall fall by the sword, and the women shall go into captivity. At Taphanes the day shall be dark, when I break there the yoke bars of Egypt, and her proud might shall come to an end in her. She shall be covered by a cloud, and her daughters shall go into captivity. Thus I will execute judgments on Egypt. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Egypt shall fall to Babylon. In the eleventh year, in the first month, on the seventh day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and behold, it has not been bound up to heal it by binding it with a bandage, so that it may become strong to wield the sword. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against Pharaoh king of Egypt, and will break his arms both the strong arm and the one that was broken, and I will make the sword fall from his hand. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them through the countries, and I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, and I will put my sword in his hand. But I will break the arms of Pharaoh, and he will groan before him like a man mortally wounded, I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, but the arms of Pharaoh shall fall. Then they shall know that I am the Lord, 
when I put my sword into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he stretches it out against the land of Egypt. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them throughout the countries. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Chapter 31 Pharaoh to be slain In the eleventh year, in the third month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, say to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude, Whom are you like in your greatness? Behold, Assyria was a cedar in Lebanon, with beautiful branches and forest shade, and of towering height its top among the clouds, the waters nourished it. The deep made it grow tall, making its rivers flow around the place of its planting, sending forth its streams to all the trees of the field. So it towered high above the trees of the field, its boughs grew large, and its branches long from abundant water in its shoots. All the birds of the heavens made their nests in its boughs. Under its branches all the beasts of the field gave birth to their young, and under its shadows lived all the great nations. It was beautiful in its greatness, in the strength of its branches, for its roots went down to abundant waters. The cedars of the garden of God could not rival it nor the fir trees equal its boughs. Neither were the plane trees like its branches. No tree in the garden of God was its equal. I made it, I made it beautiful in the mass of its branches, and all the trees of Eden envied it that were in the garden of God. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because it towered high and set its tops among the clouds, and its heart was proud of its height, I will give it into the hand of a mighty one of the nations. He shall surely deal with it as its wickedness deserves. I have cast it out. Foreigners, the most ruthless of nations, have cut it down and left it. On the mountains and in all the valleys its branches have fallen and its boughs have been broken. In all the ravines of the land and all the peoples of the earth, have gone away from its shadow and left it. On its fallen trunk dwell all the birds of he the heavens, and on its branches are all the beasts of the field. All this is in order that no tree by the waters may grow to towering heights or set their tops among the clouds, and that no trees that drink water may reach up in height, for they are all given over to death. To the world below among the children of man with those who go down to the pit. Thus says the Lord God, On the day the cedar went down to Sheol, I caused mourning. I closed the deep over it and restrained its rivers, and many waters were stopped. I clothed Lebanon in gloom for it, and all the trees of the field fainted because of it. I made the nations quake at the sound of its fall. When I cast it down to Sheol, with those who go down to the pit, and all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water were comforted in the world below. They also went down to Sheol with it, to those who are slain by the sword, yes, those who were its arms, who lived under its shadow among the nations. Whom are you thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? You shall be brought down with the trees of Eden to the world below. You shall lie among the uncircumcised with those who are slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh, and all his multitude declares the Lord God. A Lament Over Pharaoh and Egypt, Chapter 32 In the twelfth year, in the twelfth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, Son of Man. Raise a lamentation over Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say to him, You consider yourself a lion of the nation. You are like a dragon in the seas. You burst forth in your rivers, trouble the waters with your feet, and foul their rivers. Thus says the Lord God, I will throw my net over you with a host of many peoples, and they will haul you up in my dragnet, and I will cast you to the ground, on the open field I will fling you, and will cause all the birds of the heavens to settle on you. 
and I will gorge the beasts of the whole earth with you. I will strew your flesh upon the mountains and fill the valleys with your carcass. I will drench the land even to the mountains with your flowing blood, and the ravines will be full of you. When I blot you out, I will cover the heavens and make their stars dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give its light. All the bright lights of heaven I will make dark over you and put darkness on your land, declares the Lord God. I will trouble the hearts of many peoples when I bring your destruction upon the nations into the countries that you have not known. I will make many peoples appalled at you, and the hair of their kings shall bristle with horror because of you. When I brandish my sword before them, they shall tremble every moment, every one for his own life on the day of your downfall. For thus says the Lord God, The sword of the king of Babylon shall come upon you. I will cause your multitude to fall by the swords of mighty ones, all of them most ruthless nations. Then they shall bring to ruin the pride of Egypt, and all its multitude shall perish. I will destroy all its beasts from beside many waters, and no foot of man shall trouble them any more, nor shall the hooves of beasts trouble them. Then I will make their waters clear, and cause their rivers to run like oil, declares the Lord God. When I make the land of Egypt desolate, and when the land is desolate of all that fills it, when I strike down all who dwell in it, then they will know that I am the Lord. This is a lamentation that shall be chanted. The daughters of the nations shall chant it over Egypt, and over all her multitude they shall chant it, declares the Lord God. In the twelfth year, in the twelfth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, wail over the multitude of Egypt, and send them down, her and the daughters of majestic nations, to the world below, to those who have gone down to the pit. Whom do you surpass in beauty? Go down and be laid to rest with the uncircumcised. They shall fall amid those who are slain by the sword. Egypt is delivered to the sword. Drag her away and all her multitudes. The mighty chiefs shall speak of them, with their helpers out of the midst of Sheol. They have come down, they lie still, they're uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Assyria is there, and all her company, its graves all around it, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, whose graves are set in the uttermost parts of the pit, and her company is all around her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, who spread terror in the land of the living. Elam is there, and all her multitude around her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, who went down uncircumcised into the world below, who spread their terror in the land of the living, and they bear their shame with those who go down to the pit. They have made her a bed among the slain with all her multitude, her graves all around it, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, for terror of them was spread in the land of the living, and they bear their shame with those who go down to the pit. They are placed among the slain. Mesek Tubal is there, and all her multitude, her graves all around it, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, for they spread their terror in the land of the living, and they do not lie with the mighty the fallen from among the uncircumcised who went down to Sheol with their weapons of war, whose swords were laid under their heads and whose iniquities are upon their bones, for the terror of the mighty men was in the land of the living. But as for you, you shall be broken and lie among the uncircumcised with those who are slain by the sword. Edom is there, her kings and all her princes, who for all their might are laid with those who are killed by the sword, and they lie with the uncircumcised with those who go down to the pit. The princes of the north are there, all of them, 
and all the Sidonians who have gone down in shame with the slain for all the terror that they caused by their might, they lie uncircumcised with those who are slain by the sword, and they bear their shame with those who go down to the pit. When Pharaoh sees them, he will be comforted for all his multitude. Pharaoh and all his army slain by the sword, declares the Lord God, for I spread terror in the land of the living, and he shall be laid to rest among the uncircumcised with those who are slain by the sword. Pharaoh and all his multitude, declares the Lord God. And that concludes the reading in Ezekiel. And now, 1 Peter chapter 4. Stewards of God's grace. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. For the time that is past suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do, living in sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and lawless idolatry. With respect to this, they are surprised when you do not join them in the same flood of debauchery, and they malign you. But they will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is why the gospel was preached even to those who are dead, that though judged in the flesh the way people are, they might live in the spirit the way God does. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded. For the sake of your prayers, above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Suffering as a Christian Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice, insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory as God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God, and if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. And that concludes the reading in 1 Peter. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. To gain a wider audience for this series of videos, I ask a few favors of you. First, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can also click on a bell icon, and that will make sure that you receive notifications when new videos come out. Then, if you have comments or questions, uh, even if they're critical, I want to hear from them. Be civil, of course. Uh, the YouTube algorithm rewards videos that receive audience participation. So, uh, I appreciate your input. You are a part of this channel as well. Thank you, and have a blessed day.